Hello everybody and welcome. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com and today we are continuing our discussion of the envelope follower in ShaperBox 2. But before we start, I want to remind you that there's a link below to the free content navigation guide, which is an easy to navigate web page with links to all the content on this channel. And besides that, in the near future, I'm going to begin adding tips and other bits of information that will only be available there. You know, things like simple steps that will get you started and up and running quick. Things that are in the videos, but are written down in simple steps that serve as quick reminders when you need information down the road. If you're working with programs like WaveLab or Cubase Plugin, or the Cable Guys ShaperBox 2 and many, many other projects that are in the works, then I know you're going to find, just like I have, that this is an invaluable study aid. And the other thing I want to make sure you understand is that this is not a simple PDF. This is a constantly updated page that has any information that uh, is new or anytime videos are changed, really anything updated. And once you have it, you will always have the latest information constantly updated. So if you haven't gotten it already, go to the link below, click on it, and save it to your favorites. It's my gift to you, and it's absolutely free. Okay, so let's get started. So I want to start first by saying... Um, one thing about the envelope follower, it's a feature that, um, you know, I never paid a lot of attention to until um, recently. And now that I'm looking at it a little bit closer, I'm wondering how I lived without it, to be honest. It's like, uh, it's one of those things that as you start to use it, uh, you know, and you hear the way it um, breathes and works with the sounds in ShaperBox, you you know you just you just can't find a reason not to use it the thing is just great um so let me start by showing you this let's go back to our here's our little loop we're playing with and i'll uh, bring up the channel settings here so we can see them one of the just i'm just going to recommend you know as you're practicing with this one of the easiest ways to practice with it and get comfortable with it is using a, a drum loop you know you will see um the features of it a lot easier and it's you know so that's what I'm going to recommend just bring a you know a drum loop into your DAW and then put your shaper box on it just like I've got here you know any kind of drum loop and you'll um, it'd be real easy to see what's going on so let's continue we're going to continue working with the filter shaper so I'm going to bring that in now uh, before what we're going to work with today is this um, the uh, there's an attack a hold and a release and we're going to look at those in a minute um, but what I didn't show last time um, and this is something to really understand when we're dealing with this envelope filter uh, envelope follower the concept here when you have a shape like this what you want to notice is that uh, the filter the envelope follower follows the shape of whatever envelope you put in here let me let me show you this right away so let's start with this so as you see down here, you have, again, the drum beat is a very small little gray marks here. The minute I kick on, and you notice we have this filter here, this LFO shape, but the minute I kick this on, watch, see that? All the little lines now are following the shape of this LFO, and that's really the key concept here. And whatever shape you put in, let's put in a real simple shape, let's go to this. Just a straight line. See, look, it follows right there on the line. Let me pull this line down. And see, there it is right there. Let's, let's add another point right here. No matter how I move this, tilt it, angle it, or whatever I do to it, see how the sound of the drum, which are these points here, follow the shape. So that's really key. I mean, it's almost like, think of it like a little roller coaster ride. You know, whatever shape you draw in here, your sound is going to follow that shape. That's a real key concept here. Okay, now, last time we talked about the amount. And let's look at the amount again real quick before I go on, because I want to show you something. You see this little blue line here? As I move the pointer amount, either away from that, towards it, or past it, it will determine which which uh, direction these points shoot point. See, right now they're pointing downwards. Every hit is like you have the straight line, and then you have all the points going down. 
they can go extremely down or they can flatten out to the line or they can start going up or extremely up and it, it's kind of determined by where this blue line center here is and where this arrow is so watch I'm gonna first I'm gonna pull it all the way down watch what it does see how extreme now you can see the lines now as I come back up here and get close to the little blue mark here look at flat lines out you can't even see it right I want to bring this down so it's more visible here now as I continue up the scale past the blue marker now the points go upwards above the blue line so this is how you get an idea of what what's really going on here let me go all the way up see that so now they're the heartbeat so to speak is above the line so that's your kind of default right there and this arrow of a mount determines whether it goes downwards or upwards the upwards is more of a you know sharp filter cut sound and the downward kind of has a almost like a pumping you know side chain effect let's stick with the upwards for a minute because it's easier to hear all right so today here's where we and, and this is we, we cover those controls but we didn't really talk about them in depth like that so let's just i want to wrap that up with those points but now today we want to look at this attack this hold and this release okay so first i'm going to turn all these down to nothing bring them down to zero <clears throat> okay so observe the little heartbeat see how we have these hits on the kick and the snare that are kind of pointed watch what happens when i kick this attack up all the way it almost flattens it out so that's what the attack does in other words the farther down here it's in time so what it's saying is this is how quick the attack can respond so all the way down the attack can hit as quick as possible and that's why we have a point here as i move this up it slows that attack down and it doesn't even have time to actually get to a point because it's it's moving so slowly so that's how your attack affects that all the way down very quick move it up to any degree uh, to that and to the point where it almost flattens out all right <clears throat> let's leave it down there for a minute now the hold once this gets to a point it begins to fall off and that's what's happening here it hits the point and falls off like a little slope well when we turn the hold up once it gets up here depending on how to do with the hold it's going to stay up there for a while and you'll see this flat line at the peak depending on how fast or how slow I make this hold now watch when I take the hold all the way up see that it becomes like almost a straight line what it's doing is this the attack is going up but it's being held in place thus the hold and so depending on how much we do with that that's halfway on the hold and then we're gonna bring the hold back down and there we go all right so let's bring the hold up a little bit because it's gonna be easier to see this next feature all right so there's our heartbeat with a little bit of hold on it next we have the release obviously once it goes up and it's held if the release is quick once that hold is done it shoots right back down again but if we turn the release time up once it gets up there and it's held then it's going to take a long time to come back down let's demonstrate this here we go on the release again almost flat lines on the way down before it was flatlining on the way up now it's flatlining on the way down let me turn it down a little bit here the more we turn that release up the more we have a smooth slope see that take it all the way up and it just becomes like almost a again almost a flat line but midway it turns into like a steps so there you go there's a little button here after the release 
with a little A. That's the adaptive release. By, by default, again, I'm going to take this hole down a little bit too. By default, the heartbeat is hitting and falling down, hitting and falling down. But when we put, but it's coming down, still coming down at a somewhat of an angle. Even when it's when everything is turned down, there's still a bit of an angle. When you hit this adaptive release, it's a little bit slower on the decline. Let me turn it off so you can watch the graph again. If you look at the graph, it's going up and pretty down pretty quick. Up, down. Up, down. Okay, now I'm going to turn the adaptive release on. It automatically slopes a little bit slower after the hit and it says the idea here is to kind of reduce reduce the pumping a little bit if you got a sound that you know you're feeling like it it's turning a little too side chainy on you and you're getting that pumping effect and you don't want that the adaptive release will automatically kind of help to resolve that so you have that option let's turn all these down again and let's go the negative way take the uh, um the amount lever and we're going to bring it down to the other side of the blue line so now our heartbeat is dipping see that i'm going to bring this point up so let's mess with these attack first takes longer for the almost removes the point because it takes longer for the point to actually resolve itself quick quick and slow let's put it back somewhere in the middle here let's mess with the hold button hold effects once it gets to the peak it makes a drastic effect on this one definitely more of a climbing effect and then finally I release let's mess with that a little bit almost buries the sound so again attack hold release I'm gonna show you a second uh, what I found to be fun way to just mess with this but let me sh here's the thing the real key thing to take away from this today if you listen to this Okay, let's turn this envelope off and listen to what we've got. Here it's off. It's still, it's still going through an open filter. You can hear it coming from a close to an open filter. But with the envelope follower on, it's just more alive. There's just no doubt about it. It's, it just brings another dimension because what it's doing is again, it's taking into account how hard those sounds are being hit as they go through the filter so this with it off is going through the filter so we have one dimension which is a great again it's a great sound and, and there's so much you can do with that but when you add this envelope follower on it adds that dimension of not only the filter affecting it but the sound and how hard it's hit as it goes through the filter so you just get this extra musical layer to the whole thing It's great. I mean, there's just no reason not to use this thing. This, you know, you, you set up a shape, you mess with it, kick on that envelope follower and just play with it because it just, it just brings it alive. All right, so let's fool around with this a minute. Attack, let's turn everything down. Again, I want to bring this point up so it really opens up. All right, let's mess with it. Attack. Here's again, here's again, this is what I found to be kind of a fun way to deal with this. <clears throat> Start by taking any one of these sounds. I would take it right from the beginning from the attack, you know, and I would move my attack knob and listen to it until something catches my fancy. Now, if something doesn't catch me, if I mess with it and I go, no, nah, there's nothing really exciting about that, then move on to the hold and do the same thing. Kick it on, move it around back and forth and see if something catches you something that goes something different from what you're hearing and you go oh there you go that's something interesting if that doesn't do it then go on to the release do the same thing and play with it move it up and down until you hear something that maybe catches you if none of those catch you then forget it just leave it like it is and mess with the with the uh, 
you know this amount knob here but if one of these catch you the attack the hold or the release and it changes it to a sound that you like then leave that just leave it where it's at and then go back again and start over with the other ones start if let's say the because uh, i'm going to demonstrate this in a minute, but let's say the release catches you. you you move it up halfway here and you go oh that sounds great okay leave it there go back to the attack and the hold and start playing with them again move them up move them down until it, it seems like it, it makes it better if it makes it better if you find something you like leave that if it doesn't go to the next one and play with it and that's how that's how you'll find your sound and uh, once you've kind of messed with those you know three or four times like that you'll lock something in that that will definitely be interesting so let's do that i'm going to start with the attack Nothing's, nothing's hitting me. I'm going to go to the hold. Oh, right there. I'm getting a nice deep hit, so I like it. I'm going to leave the hold. It's definitely breathing and, and pumping a little bit more. Now I'm going to go to the release. Mm, nothing so much there that I like. I'm going to go back to the attack. There we go. It's more drastic. I like it. All right. I'm going to go back down to the release one more time. Nothing. I'm not getting. Let me turn the adapter release off. I like the adapter run. There it is. So there you go. I would use that. If I had a song that was going to affect, let me kick my song on. I've got everything muted. Now, because it's so filtered in the song, I might start messing with the amount. Let's do this. change the volume of my sound there we go that's it that's how you do it now I definitely could build on that and make some great stuff all right there you go Pick up the uh, navigation guide if you don't have it. You'll be glad you did. There's just tons of stuff being added there all the time. And uh, notes and all kinds of things. And just sometimes I'm starting to even just put thoughts in there to share. So um, check it out. You're going to really like it. That's it for today. We're going to continue this discussion with the envelope follower. And we'll pick it up next time. You guys have a great one.